But when I want to call on God, I say that he is my way out of no way. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But when I call on God, I call on my bridge over troubled water. And when I want an expression or I need an expression of God, I call on my way out of no way. Amen. I call him my heart fixer. I call him my mind regulator. I call him that wheel that's spinning in the middle of a wheel. He's the light unto my feet and the lamp unto my path. And I can't explain all of those great names of God when I want to call on them. I just say Jesus. I just say, oh, Jesus. But he has allowed for us to give him pet names because there's no one word there are no string of words we couldn't lay the bible or the dictionary side by side line upon line precept upon precept and adequately explain who god is amen, amen. are you hearing what i'm saying to you but he has allowed for us to call him according to our revelation of who he is so he started by the lord is my shepherd. God wanted David to know personally through revelation that he was his shepherd. That the same way David took care of his sheep, God takes care of his sheep. We are the sheep of God's pasture and he takes care of us in the same light as David took care of his sheep. He called David to understand by speaking in a language that David could understand by linking his divinity to the most common occupation in Israel at that time, which was being a shepherd. He caused him to understand that God takes care of all of his people. I will tell you today that if you're his sheep, God takes care of you. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now we've heard that all of our lives, but I submit to you a different revelation in this text. That if the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want spiritually. Because God is a spirit. Those that worship God must worship God in the spirit. Oftentimes we miss the benefits of having the Lord as our shepherd because we try to use a holy God to give us carnal things. Oftentimes we miss the blessings of having the Lord as our shepherd because we treat him as a genie in a lamp. We conjure the Lord up when we need something in our lives and then we put him back up after he has done what he has said and promised to do in our lives. If the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. Because the Lord is a spirit and you are a spirit. So everything that you should want should come out of your spirit. Spirit man is perfect or mature in that your spirit man will never ask for anything that your fleshly man cannot handle. Oftentimes we come to God out of our flesh and not seeking the kingdom of God first and we miss what God has for us because we didn't let the spirit man ask God for what it is that we need. But because the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. He will supply all of your needs according to his riches that is in glory. Hey, are you hearing and understanding what I'm saying to you? He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. He may not give you the money for that light bill today, but he will be on time. He may not heal your body the first time you ask for it, but he will be on time. And he may not restore what you asked him to restore the first time you ask him to restore it, but he will be right on time. If the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. It says he maketh me to lie down in green pastures and he leadeth me beside the still waters. Before we go into that, we must first understand the limitations in the anatomy of earthly sheep. You see, sheep have dull teeth. And because they have dull teeth, they can't eat brown, withered, leathery grass with no life in it. So God led, the shepherd led them into green or fresh, abundant pastures. Their noses are close to their mouths, so it was difficult for them to drink at choppy waters or, or steadily, violently flowing streams because they would 
choke themselves trying to fulfill their hunger and they will drown themselves trying to fulfill their thirst. Just, just walk with me for one second. Boy, this is good to me. God, because he is our shepherd, will lead us into green pastures. The green pastures denote abundance and it notes freshness. He wants to lead us into the abundance and the freshness of the word of God. That we can devour the word of God when it comes our way. He leads us beside the still waters because he understands that we are led by spirit beings and he does not want us to be choked up by dry, lifeless, unseasoned word and he doesn't want us to be drowned by leaders' choppy spirituality. The grass always looks greener on the other side. But if you aren't led by God into green pastures, you will be led into choppy pastures or to a, a, a bit of grass here and a bit of grass there. And the grass that grows in patches grows faster than the smooth out plain of the green pastures. And it looks better to you at first sight until you look on the other side to see the brown withered grass on the other side. If you're not led by God, you will always be led into the wrong place. You will be impressed by someone's spirituality. You will be impressed by the revelation of the word. But if they have a choppy spirit life, but you only see the outward things of their life, they'll be up today and they'll be cussing you tomorrow. They'll have a word for you today, but they won't have anything to tell you tomorrow. Their lifestyle will be choppy, and the word will be unseasoned or brown, leathery, withered away word. See, sometimes God will skip over the patchy patches and the running water or to lead you to the green pastures and the still waters. In other words, God will, won't do what's convenient in your life all the time. The shepherd, when he was leading them to green pastures and still waters, more than likely had to pass up the choppy waters and the patchy pastures. But he cared about the sheep so much that he wanted them to have longevity when they ate, that after they ate, they can lay down in the green pastures. <laughs> That they can drink by the still waters and not have to worry about what's going to happen the next day. So he leadeth me in the green pastures and beside the still waters. Then it says he restores my soul. He restores my soul. Sheep are one track minded. That when they begin to graze, they don't take into account all of the things that are around them. So sometimes while they're grazing and while they're eating, they can walk right into a briar patch. They've been known to walk off the cliff or walk into the midst of ravenous wolves. The shepherd knowing this never takes his eyes off of the sheep. He never takes his eyes off of the sheep so when they begin to stray away, he restores them back to the sheepfold. Amen. Jesus knows when I'm too foolish and too fleshy to know when I'm headed in the midst of ravenous wolves. He knows that when I'm too foolish and fleshly to realize that I'm walking right in the midst of danger, that he restores my soul back to the place where I need to be. Amen. Amen. God is a restorer of our souls. God will restore our souls. And there's one thing we need to understand about our souls is that our souls are the seed of our existence. In your soul lies your consciousness, your self-consciousness and your subconsciousness. In your soul is your mind, your emotions, your feelings, your flexibility. Everything about you dwells within your soul. So when God restores you, he restores your soul. If there's anything that the enemy wants to destroy about you, it is not your flesh. The enemy wants to destroy your soul. He wants to destroy the part of you that belongs to God. The enemy hates you because you have a soul that belongs to God. See, the flesh is the external, but the soul is internal. The flesh is mortal, but your soul is immortal. So the enemy wants to destroy your soul, but God said he restores my soul. Your soul is the anchor to your spirituality. 
or it's the anchor to the spirit reality. Spirituality is just the reality that you are a spirit from God. This vessel is a vessel of dust.